So we are back in the word and we are still dealing with the Apostle Paul, okay? The Apostle Paul, whose name is really Saul, okay? Just like King Saul. The Apostle Paul is also from the tribe of Benjamin, just like Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin. They both have a history of abusing the woman, okay? I want you to get that. It's going to be in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1. This is going to be the shot out that King David gave King Saul after he was murdered, okay? And there's two different stories on what happened, okay? And this is all going into how there is a controversy on the death of Jesus, okay? The accounts don't match up, all right? One account says Paul fell upon his sword, which we interpret as falling upon his own word, which means falling upon his own book. And also the Amalekite, he tried to get the glory, tried to impress King David by saying he killed him. Okay, so that is all going into this big lie about Jesus being crucified. This is going to be 2 Samuel 1.24. This is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 24. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. All right, they had to get that shout out, okay? <laughs> Give a shout out to Mr. Drink Your Bath Water, baby, okay? Mr. Got You Clothed in Your Apparel, all right? Who also got you in your decked out? clothing line all right so i want you also to go to verse 26 watch this i am distressed for thee my brother jonathan very pleasant hast thou been unto me thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of women look king david had to throw that hint in there he was like the love we share it passed the love of women amazingly what tribe jonathan is from benjamin all right he is from the tribe of benjamin all right and you got to notice jonathan stripped himself and gave david his clothes he gave him his sword okay he loved him like he loved his own soul and amazingly these Christian gay churches, they take these scriptures and they flip it, okay? And they try to make it seem like David was gay. But David was not gay, all right? I want you to go back to verse 24. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet. Who clothed you in scarlet, okay? Keep going. With other delights. With other delights delights okay this is also going into the apostle paul okay right now most men are following the apostle paul when it comes to marriage okay so king david is giving a shout out to benjamin all right now i want to keep going i want to go to benjamin sack i want to go to the silver all right, that was in Benjamin's sack and what it all represents. All right, so this is going to be Genesis 45, verse 22. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 45, verse 22. To all of them, he gave each man changes of raiment. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. All right, he made sure he looked out for Benjamin. Benjamin had 300 pieces of silver. Now, silver, I'm going to show you, it represents redemption sometimes. Sometimes silver represents refinement and purification. All right, sometimes silver even represents wealth and prosperity. 
But guess what else silver represents? Silver represents betrayal, greed, and treachery. All right? Now I want you to go to Genesis chapter 44, verse 2. This is the book of Genesis chapter 44, verse 2. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph has spoken. All right, so if you know the story, Joseph is making his brothers suffer for lying and selling him into slavery. All right, so he's setting them up. They already took Simeon captive as collateral because Joseph told them that they were spies. And they had to prove that their word was true. Okay, so they had to go home and they had to get Benjamin. All right. Now they brought Benjamin back. Everything's cool. They getting ready to leave. But Joseph set them up because he wanted them to suffer. All right. So now it looks like Benjamin has been being deceitful. All right, now let's go to verse 3. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. All right, they on them doggies, and they is back home to Jacob. They thought they was. Now let's go to verse 4. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Now, he's letting them know. Get them. Get them. All right. Now, let's go to verse 12. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. There's sin in the camp of Israel. There's sin in the camp. All right. Guess who is guilty? The tribe of Benjamin. All right. We got to get to this thing right here. Okay. There is a story in this. Benjamin has the silver. Before we finish this, I want to show you that out of all the tribes of Israel and the wickedness that all the tribes of Israel have done. Benjamin, he has the biggest mess. He has the biggest mess. And I want you to get that for me. This is going to be in the book of Genesis 4334. This is the book of Genesis chapter 43 verse 34. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. But Benjamin's mess was what? Five times. All right, so... Benjamin's mess, okay, was five times over. Now, this is just referencing food, okay? This is metaphorically speaking of the mess. The tribe of Benjamin left, okay? It's a huge mess, okay? You got to understand, Benjamin's mess is going into the Apostle Paul's mess, okay? Because he is from the tribe of Benjamin, he is the one teaching that Jesus was both crucified, buried, and resurrected, okay? He is the one that's teaching all these laws that are contrary to the teachings of Jesus. Going into eating food sacrificed to idols. Going into forbidding multiple wives, okay? And the abuse the tribe of Benjamin has put upon the woman is seen in the life of Paul, okay? He wanted women to clean, shut up, cook food. If you look at his teachings, okay? He wanted all men to be just like him, okay? He didn't want men to procreate. Now, we're going to get back to where we was at. I want you to get that in Genesis 44, verse 12. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 44, verse 12. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. 
And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack, okay? Now that cup could be going into communion. If you think about it, communion is a very fishy topic in the Bible. Because communion originated supposedly with Jesus and his disciples. But the one who has given us knowledge about communion is the Apostle Paul, who wasn't even at the communion table. How come he has a great deal of knowledge about communion? And how come we got the letters of Paul first before we got the letters of the Gospels? I'm afraid that the Gospels were shaped by the letters of Paul, just like the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, okay? And the mess, the five times of a mess, what could that be going into? That could be going into eating food, sacrifice to idols. The church agreed not to eat food, sacrifice to idols. However, Paul tells us that we can in 1 Corinthians. And why would God want us to drink blood anyway? Even when David's three mighty men risked their lives to bring him water, David would not drink it because it was like drinking blood and he would not do it. All right. Why would he want us to drink blood? Why would God Almighty want us to drink juice or wine as a figure of Jesus blood? Somehow that just doesn't sit right with me and you if you really think about it he doesn't want us to eat meat with blood in it why would he want us to drink blood peter never told us about it james never told us about it the apostle paul i think is like a type and shadow of vlad dracula okay this man was an enemy to Mehmet the second, all right. Um, Vlad was famous for the stakes, all right. He killed people on the stake, just like the Apostle Paul has been killing the church with the cross. He was a great enemy, and he killed a lot of Mehmet the second, the conqueror's men. But you know what, Mehmet the second eventually got the victory over him and killed him, all right? And I know for a fact that one of these days coming soon, that grip that the Apostle Paul has on the church is going to be loosed, all right? Just like the tribe of Benjamin when they were abusing the concubine and that concubine represents the church, they're going to be forced to let her go. All right. Getting back to the message. Somebody in the tribe of Benjamin is guilty. All right. Now I want you to keep going in your Bible. Keep reading. Then they rent their clothes and laid in every man his ass and returned to the city. All right. Keep going. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house for he was yet there and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Will ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? All right, so he was playing it off like he divined, like he found out, okay? Through the way of divining, okay? Keep going. And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. Keep going. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my servant. All right, so we talked about the Apostle Paul in jail, okay? We talked about him being the jailer, all right? You got to understand that Simeon was held captive. Until they brought Benjamin. Alright, so 
I want you to keep going. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. I don't want nobody but Benjamin. All right, keep going. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. All right, so in the same chapter and in the same verse, it is talking about Benjamin and Joseph. All right, it is talking about the lie that Joseph is dead right here with Benjamin. And the apostle Paul teach that Jesus was crucified more than any other apostle, okay? That was the main clause of his message. That Jesus was crucified. Alright, so I want you to read that last verse you just read again. And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. His brother is dead. Who is his brother talking about? Joseph. Joseph, okay, which is a type and shadow of Jesus. Was Joseph dead? No. Jesus is not dead. Now keep going. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. All right, speaking of Benjamin, so keep going. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Keep going. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go again, and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down, if our youngest brother be with us. Then will we go down, for we may not see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. So he telling him the whole story. Keep going. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons, and the one went out from me. And I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. All right, who is this one he talking about? Joseph. Joseph. And Joseph is a type and shadow of who? Jesus. Jesus is not dead, y'all. And how come Joseph is connected to Benjamin? It's the same reason why Jesus is connected to the Apostle Paul. Now keep going. And I saw him not since. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Benjamin and Joseph, Jesus and Paul. Keep going. Now therefore, when I come to thy servant my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life. It shall come to pass, when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die, and thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. So what he's telling you is, everybody in Christianity is really worshiping Paul. Jacob said his life was inside of Benjamin's life. Okay? The Apostle Paul is the founder of Christianity. Okay? Not Jesus. The Apostle Paul is the founder of Christianity. And he said, if you do not bring Benjamin home, all right, I am going to die. Why? Because he believed the lie that Joseph was dead. He already thinking that Joseph is dead. Okay, just like many people are believing that Jesus is dead. Now keep going. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father. Keep going. Saying, if I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. All right, so who is responsible? Judah. Judah is responsible. That's why he is testifying. He is pleading his cause. Okay, he is pleading his case. He is testifying. He like, I got to come home with Benjamin. I got to come home with Benjamin or I'm going to be in trouble. Keep going. Now, therefore, I pray thee, 
Let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bond man to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. Now I want you to go to Genesis 42, verse 36. Because I want to show you more evidence of Joseph connected with Benjamin. Just like Jesus connected with the Apostle Paul. There's a huge lie. There is a huge lie. Let's get that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 42, verse 36. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not. And you will take Benjamin away. And you will take who away? Benjamin away. You will take Benjamin away, okay? Because they lying. They lying, they lying, they lying. Even in despair. Even when things is getting real crazy, they still want to hold on to this lie that Joseph is dead when Joseph is right in their face. Could you imagine how he was feeling while they were still lying instead of just telling the truth and saying, you know what, we've messed up, we've lied to our father and said that some wild beast tore him, but the truth of the matter is, Joseph is not dead just like Jesus was not crucified. All right? I give God all the praise for showing me this in the Bible. I didn't find this on YouTube. I didn't Google this up. This comes from being in the Word. The Lord showed me that abuse is connected to Benjamin. Every time abuse is mentioned in the 66 books of the Bible, because God wants to wake Christians up to break free from this abuse from Apostle Paul, okay? Every time you see abuse in the Bible, in your 66 books, it is connected to Benjamin. It's connected to the wolf in sheep clothing. Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep clothing. All right? He said, beware of one coming out of the wilderness. Doing signs and miracles in my name. I got so much to keep going on this. Now I want to take you to Genesis 45, starting off at verse 1. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 45, verse 1. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. All right, he made himself known to his brothers. Okay? Now, most people who actually study, all right, I'm talking about people who study. The only logical way that he could prove that he was Joseph, he had to show his circumcision. All right. That was going to hit it home. They knew without a shadow of a doubt that it was Joseph. Because think about it. It could have been Joseph telling somebody that this person is Joseph. But it really wasn't Joseph. So the only way to remove all doubt from his brothers was to reveal himself and to show them his circumcision. All right. Now, that's painful, okay? But it's real. That's really going to show you that he is not jiving and that he is not playing no games. All right, you got to pay attention to the Bible. Don't you know that Joshua, okay, in the Bible, he had to circumcise all the men of Israel that was not circumcised, okay? There's not many scriptures on that. But Joseph had to prove who he really was, and the way he could prove it by showing that he was circumcised. Now, I don't want to get into this message preaching about how Jesus is not dead because I got many messages on it. This message is on Paul, okay? The truth of the matter is, just like Joseph was not dead, Jesus was not dead. Just like Joseph was not killed, Jesus was not killed. That's the truth about it. All right. I ain't got time to go through it. I tell y'all like I tell y'all before, go watch Lion King or something. OK, but I want to show you another marker in the Bible proving that this is all connected to the Apostle Paul. 
Now in the same chapter, I want you to go to verse 14. Verse 14. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck. His what? His brother Benjamin's neck. Keep going. And wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Now watch this. I want you to go to the book of Acts. I want you to go to the book of Acts. And I want you to go to chapter 20. Verse 37. This is the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 37. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck. And fell upon who? Paul's neck. And fell upon Paul's neck. There's no other scriptures in the Bible that's connected like this. This is right here in the Bible. They weeping on Paul's neck. Just like they was weeping on Benjamin's neck. Okay? I'm telling you. God is in the neck of his enemies. Okay? God is in the neck of his enemies. Now I'm showing you. Scripture after scripture, and I'm connecting, and I'm connecting, and I'm connecting. All right? I'm going to show you another one about Benjamin in the neck. Watch this. I want you to go to 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 12. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 12. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent. And with earth upon his head. All right, so this man of Judah, he came to tell Eli that his two sons is dead. Now think about it. These two sons were the sons that Eli was exalting above the father. All right, God told Eli, why are you honoring your sons above me. And here we have a man of Benjamin going to tell Eli that his sons are dead. And this man of Benjamin is the messenger. Now look at verse Samuel 4, 18. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break. And his neck what? His neck break. And his neck break keep going and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged israel 40 years all right so here we have another connection with benjamin and the neck all right the nation of benjamin or rather the tribe of benjamin took a woman and they abused her all night now this woman was a concubine which represents the church and the church is being abused by the Apostle Paul. Now, the word abuse, if you put it in the search in any other Bible, let's say you have an apocrypha, there's a few other times abuse comes up. But if you was to go to your 66 books of the Bible and do a search, it only comes connected to Paul or Saul. Either way, they're both Saul. So this is showing you evidence from your own Bible how the Apostle Paul is guilty of being the abuser. He's been abusing the church, all right, with the lies. Number one lie is the death of Jesus. That's not true. Number two lie, Jesus is not God, okay? Those are some of the biggest lies that is deceiving most people. All right. This is going into Benjamin's mess. This is why his mess was five times more. Because there's some things that was done in the tribe of Benjamin that it took more time to clean up. Think about it today. How many people out in the world believe that Jesus Christ is God? Many. And where do they get that from? Paul, how many people in this world believe that Jesus is crucified? Many. And where do they get that from? Paul. They get that from Paul. The Bible tells you to beware of wolves in sheep clothing. All right. Now I want to give you a scripture where he literally says that. 
He literally said it himself. This is going to be the book of Acts chapter 20. I want you to go to verse 28. This is the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now look, he's still lying. Now watch this. Keep going. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. He was telling them to beware of wolves when he was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was from the tribe of the wolf. And he was deceiving the people. All right. Now I want to go to verse 23. Because I told you, Paul was the jailer. Just like jail, killing people with the tent peg. Paul was killing the church with the cross. And the original cross, the original Roman cross was the shape of a T. Not a cross. Okay. It was like a T. Do your homework. Which is just like a tip peg. And he's been killing the church with the cross. Now, he was going to be bound. Remember the prophet Agabus came to him and took his belt. And said the Holy Ghost is going to bind you up. The Holy Ghost is going to chain you up. Now look what it says in verse 23. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me. Look, there's a prison waiting for you, Apostle Paul. Islam is the truth. I have an extraordinary hadith to read you. This is an authentic hadith. And it goes like this. This is going to be book 37, hadith 2680. The proud will be gathered on the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles in the image of men. They will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Paul. In the Arabic tongue, it's pronounced Bulas. So there is a prison with your name on it. Okay, Apostle. Oh, there is a prison waiting for you. OK, the Holy Ghost keeps telling him that bonds and afflictions abide me. That's going into waiting for you. He was telling him, hey, Paul, watch out. They are trying to take you captive. Every place you go, they are trying to take you captive. Now, this is the thing that he was doing before he even came into church. He was arresting and binding all that called upon the name of Jesus, okay? So I have so much more. I also want to deal with the fact that the tribe of Benjamin was against relationships, all right? I want you to get that for me. This is going to be 1 Samuel 19, 17. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 17. And Saul said unto Michal, Why hast thou deceived me so? And sent away mine enemy, that he is escaped. And Michal answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So here you have Saul. He promised to give David his daughter, and then he gave her to somebody else. That's against relationships. Now he's trying to kill his son-in-law. Okay, that is toxic. Okay, how are you going to be killing your son-in-law? All right, and you notice his own daughter, she got that same spirit. McCall, okay, because you remember McCall, okay? She was the one that was jealous when King David was praising God, all right? And she literally said some slick stuff, and David had to check her and said, Look, God made me king. In place of your father. And remember what he told her? He said, looky here, woman. I will get more vowed than this. I'll get more undignified than this. And the Bible says that McCall bore him no children to her death. And here we have McCall lying. She just literally told her dad. She was like, hey, he said he was going to try to kill me. Lying. 
Toxic, man. The tribe of Benjamin is toxic with relationships. Now I want you to keep going. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 7, 38. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 38. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Look, he telling you, okay, if you make babies, that's cool. But if you don't make no babies, that's better. Whoa. Was it McCall childless? Yes. She was childless. Look at this stuff. It's toxic, man. This is abuse. This is domestic abuse. I want you to go to verse 40. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of God. He said, I think I have the spirit of God. If she stayed by herself, you know, she, she'll be better. She'll be better. All right. I should use that clip lonely in this message because that's exactly what Paul is doing. Let's keep going. I want you to get verse 7. 1 Corinthians 7, 7. For I would that all men were even as myself. Paul was single. He said, I wish that all men was single like me. Lonely, I'm Mr. Lonely. I have nobody for my own. Now, it's not rocket science to understand now that he didn't want men marrying multiple women. He definitely had to cut that off. He didn't even want men marrying another woman. He wanted men to be single just like him. Read that again. For I would that all men were even as myself. I wish that all men was like myself. All right, that's all I need on that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, 8. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. All right, so he was also telling the widows, okay? And we know that widows, you know, most widows, you know, after they had a husband, you know, they can stay single. Okay, that's more honorable, okay? But according to the Bible, you don't have to. You can remarry if the husband is dead, all right? But let's keep going. I want you to get verse 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. I want you to stay right where you at. Now go to verse 24. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. He is telling people to stay where you at. If you marry, stay there. All right? But he also said if you single, stay there. If you marry, don't try to get out of it. And if you're not married, don't try to get married. The Apostle Paul was against marriage. The church is being abused right now. Right now, the church is being abused. Now, I want you to get what Jeremiah said in the book of Jeremiah 29, 5. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. All right. This is Jeremiah speaking. Keep going. Take ye wives. He said do what? Take ye wives. Take ye wives. Keep going. And beget sons and daughters. And make sons and daughters. Okay. Keep going. And take wives for your sons. And take wives for your sons. He didn't say stay where you at. He didn't say stay single. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. The prophet Jeremiah was saying the same thing that God said. But what happened? We had a wolf come in. We had a self-proclaimed apostle. No other person called Paul an apostle but himself. And he is against the law of creation. Keep going. And give your daughters to husbands. Give your daughters to husbands, Saul. Don't take them back. Okay? Don't try to kill their sons-in-law. Keep going. That they may bear sons and daughters. That ye may be increased there and not diminished. And not diminish. Okay? Even Jeremiah had enough sense to think about the family structure in the circle of life. He wanted it to keep going. Just like God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Now, keep going. 
and seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. All right, so this was in their captivity. The children of Israel were in captivity in Babylon. And Jeremiah is still telling them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth. I have so much more to go on this. And we're going to pick back up on it because we have reached time for the day. All right. But we're going to get back to this, Lord willing. I want y'all to have a good night. I want y'all to study. I don't want y'all to be blind. Read your Bible. Break free from the abuse. Shalom.